learned at Beck that our customers like things fast. Yes, <laughs> I would agree with that big time. So we coached our sales team <laughs> to better, Guilty. Yeah, to better ask the question up front, do you want it true to fruit or fanciful? The simpler the survey is the way to go to get the most feedback. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Behind the Flavor, presented to you by Beck Flavors and hosted by yours truly, Michael Schubert. Today, we're gonna hop into our first episode with our lovely guest, Megan Sampson. She is our sensory scientist here at Beck Flavors, and we're gonna unveil all things sensory. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem. Appreciate you joining with us. If I'm not wrong, you've been at Beck Flavors probably around five years now? Yeah, I just hit my five-year anniversary. Yeah, it's been awesome being at Beck for five years. I've learned so much and brought past experiences with me, and um, we've just been growing as a company, so it's been really cool. Megan, you're a real go-getter, okay? Because you have one of the most interesting stories in getting to Beck flavors. Could you share a little bit about that? How did you get here at Beck? Yeah, well, when I started at Beck five years ago, um, we were a smaller group. And I just sent in a resume and shared my uh, skill sets. And I have a food science background. I've worked in product development, nutrition education, and sensory evaluation. And so uh, the sensory part appealed to them. So they created a position for me, which was amazing and above and beyond. Uh, my best memory of that whole process was my first interview was Halloween and everybody was dressed up. So I knew I was in for a treat if I were to be lucky enough to work at Beck. Yeah, that's awesome. That is a really unique story. You know, most folks who come to Beck, they don't just walk in the front door and be like, you guys need to make a new job for me, all right? <laughs> so that is very interesting. Um, why don't we start out big picture then, right? Yeah. What is sensory? So sensory in the food industry to us means tasting and smelling different food products. Um, generally, sensory has three different areas. It has descriptive, where you want to describe a product and figure out if there's any um, differences, what those differences are. And then there's difference testing, where you simply answer if products are different. Um, and then there's affective, which is a little bit more about the people than the product. So you get to know the people who are having, um, utilizing your products. Yeah. Um, so you always want to ask yourself the research question, what is my end goal? when I want to do a sensory test because there's so many different types of sensory testing. And I love that you say that because it's a beautiful thing that kind of correlates with what Beck does best, which is custom. Yes. Like everything here at Beck can be custom from meetings to podcasts to the sensory work that you do. Yeah. Um, so it's very important for people to tell us what they're looking for so that we can appropriately test the sensory in it. Yes, that's so true. And people come to Beck for a partner, not just a supplier. And so sensory evaluation from us helps with that. We can help them answer questions about their products or the people using it, um, help them make data-driven business decisions that they feel good about moving forward with commercializations or maybe continuing in reformulations. So. Um, it's a real benefit for Beck internally and for our customers. It's funny that you bring it up about making like business decisions because mm -hmm. um, we've had some customers in the past come to us because they're trying to make those business decisions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and one that I remember I got to be lucky enough to participate in was uh, we did a sensory test, wasn't it? Like coffee bases versus flavoring. Why don't, you, why don't you tell me a little bit about that sensory we did? Yeah, so sometimes when we do in-depth research, um, sometimes when we do in-depth research projects that are not necessarily about a product that's to be commercialized, but more about understanding um, a part of their product, we get these ideas from our customers. Because of that partnership, they trust us to do research together. And so we had a coffee customer who reached out to us. They had different coffee bases, and they buy flavors in all kinds of different categories, caramel, chocolate, vanilla, hazelnuts. Um, and they wanted to know if certain 
coffee bases, so different acid levels, roast levels, all of that, um, origin, um, high quality, price, you know, that kind of stuff. And if certain flavor categories performed better on certain coffee bases. It's a question they always had. They were looking for efficiencies. So together we came up with a research plan on what that looked like on the survey end and what flavor bases we were gonna, fla coffee bases we were gonna try and what flavor categories made sense to them. And so it was a series of blind tasting coffee bases with the same flavor on it so that we could figure out what coffee performed best on vanilla flavors? Which coffee performed best on caramel flavors? And they learned a lot from this study. Um, it was a simple survey that we did that had two or three questions about um, likability and flavor intensity and if the um, coffee, the flavored coffee was true to its name. So if we're trying a chocolate coffee, but it's more acidic than you would expect the chocolate coffee to be, then that received a lower score and maybe that coffee base isn't the one you would use for the chocolate categories. So we did a lot of that type of um, simple survey questions but then deep diving into the data together with our customers. That's so awesome. And one thing that I loved that you said there was like simple survey questions, but that's not always the case, is it? Because like if they did, would like to know like a more in-depth thing about it or a more complex question about it then you would be able to change how we're asking the consumer base that we're testing yes. on these types of questions that they're looking at oh yeah totally because if the question is hard to understand if it's not in a term that somebody is used to then that's going to be a hurdle for the the survey takers that might lead to invalid information. Yes, yeah, so it's definitely important for you to understand who's taking your survey so that you can plan the questions accordingly. If the questions are not easy to understand or have never seen the type of question before, like maybe a certain line scale of intensity, that's not something you see every day, but everybody knows how to check a box um, or say if they like something or not. So that's the that's on the simple side, and it doesn't take much time at all to have people take that test. But if you want to collect data in a more intricate way, the questions might get more complicated, and you might have to take time to train somebody to even answer the question or understand the products. So I've learned at Beck that our customers like things fast. Yes, I would agree with that big time. So I usually try to steer our surveys to be as user-friendly as possible. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, though, because <clears throat> with all things that we do at Beck, uh, you know, customer is king, and we're always trying to make it like the most user-friendly process as we can. Um, I do want to touch base on uh, another case study we did. Mm -hmm. This one happens to be my favorite case study. It's something that I use all the time when trying to explain to customers how, you know, they may perceive a flavor to be one way, but they actually like the taste of this flavor in the other way. So as you know, in the flavor world, um, you know, when everybody talks about natural flavors, a lot of folks are just referring to an extract itself. And we know now, hindsight, after you did a really good sensory test, that most people with a specific fruit, they don't like it as just an extract. Do you kind of want to unpack that a little bit more for our audience? Yeah, so we learned through our salespeople and through our customers how valuable that feedback up front on what your expectations are for a product um, can help us get you a flavor that works right away or helps us customize a flavor that's just what you need particularly in the fruit category because we learned with our mango products a couple years ago that we were very true to fruit so we did a small sensory um, panel deep dive into what do we expect when we taste something mango um, so we go into those sub attributes and that could be juicy that could be tropical that could be um, Gordy, like a, the inside of a pumpkin, some people yeah. said, you know, that leans towards unripe. Um, even some people said black pepper, that's true to the fruit. Then we asked ourselves, when we have a mango 
flavored beverage, what do we expect mango to be? So that could be um, juicy and sweet and maybe even citrus. Something that's not true to the fruit necessarily is more fanciful and popular with that type of product. So we learned through tasting like 50 different mango products in the market where our flavor stood compared to some of those popular mango products. And we were very true to fruit. And a lot of these popular products were fanciful. They were just a generic tropical, sometimes citrus. And so uh, we developed some new mango flavors and we coached our sales team <laughs> to, better, Guilty. Yeah, to better ask the question up front when any fruit flavor is being sampled, do you want it true to fruit or fanciful? So think banana. Banana flavors out there in candy especially don't necessarily taste like a true to fruit banana. You think of a banana runts candy, that's yeah. a totally different profile. Or the Laffy so Taffy. So how are we in the R&D lab to, Laffy Taffy, yeah, <laughs> to know which one you're really searching for until we ask those questions and look for those sub attributes? Yeah, it's one of my favorite things to explain to customers too. Um, Cause as you know, like the biggest, um, most fun thing that I get to do is teaching uh, customers of ours about the flavor um, is trying to teach them that there are these minute differences that they don't even realize. Because usually when I bring up that question, you can already see that like, aha, light bulb, like, yeah oh, I've never thought about that before. Yeah. Uh, and then it's kind of true. Most people seem to, after I bring that up, they lean towards more of like Wanos that have those accenting flavors in them. Yeah. And when you say fun, I mean, literally when we talk about our jobs to anybody in the industry or outside the industry, everyone thinks we're here having fun and we really are. Yeah. I mean, we have a research and development team that is just above and beyond super great at their job. And so the custom flavors that we make are going into these great products. We're helping growing companies grow even bigger. Um, and we do that through food science and these taste testings and um, just working together with our customers on what exactly that they want. And so um, on the taste testing side, when I tell people about what I do <laughs> for my career, um, and I kind of simply put it that I make people taste things for research. <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean? And we talk about Beck and we talk about, you know, what is sensory science? And, um, and it's just a fun, we're lucky that it's a, it's a fun place to be. Yeah. And coming prior to joining Beck, you know, I had never even thought about how flavor worked, let alone even thought about the word sensory before. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that was like, a lot for me to take in at the beginning but now that i know it i'm like man we got to teach more people about this it's yes. so fun to learn about um i do kind of want to pivot a little bit on you though because something else that i find super interesting uh is the way that we can help with surveys too um, so I do know that at times we offer a lot of our customers like, hey, if you have a new product out there, we can help with like QR code surveying to maybe yeah. get some consumer feedback on some so demos. We have some customers that um, have LTOs, you know, limited time offer offerings where they want to get some feedback on that. So we will include a QR code insert with maybe like their SIP club or something like that where they can ask a few questions about the product to gain feedback on how it's performing or if they want to see it more often um, or if certain parts of it need work or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then we also have some customers that have like brick and mortar type locations where they could put this QR code with the survey to again gain customer feedback right away on the beverages or food that they're having in their establishment and learn from their customers right then and there. Um, sometimes the, they might offer an incentive, you know, free beer for the hundredth survey participant. Or I'm taking like that, that survey. I'm not going to yeah. lie, Megan. I'm yeah. taking that one. <laughs> um, so our customers really like to be able to just survey customers and get information. Um, so some of those types of questions might be as simple as like a smiley face rating or, um, you know, what are you drinking today? Checkbox. Um, it could be a likability. So the question might say, uh, how much are you enjoying this? And it's 
five options, I like it a lot or I don't like it a lot. You can follow up those kinds of questions with what is it that you like about it and um, it could be a comment box which can get a little bit messy to sift through all of the comments so I like to do a check all that apply where you can give them options to choose. So the simpler the survey, you know, smaller amount of questions that are very to the point where people can kind of make decisions quickly is the way to go to get the most feedback because sometimes it can be hard to get people to scan that QR code first but if you let them know it's two questions and takes less than a minute yeah right? then they're, they're more like, okay and I can win it. a free beer right? yeah 100 <laughs> percent. they're definitely more inclined to do things like that yeah. um I think there's another thing that's kind of important here too is so say I am a customer and I'm like hey Megan I need some help um, yeah. We want to do this sensory test. Is that only something that you and the, the great staff and flavors there at Beck Flavors do? Or is that something where, like, you could send it to my team to be tested? Or could we actually, like, find some consumers and test against them, too? Oh, great question. So depending on the research goal of the survey, um, sometimes we have a small group, an expert panel of um, Bexters that are trained in certain questions and areas. So, for example, if you wanted to understand the small differences between a product, that takes time to train people about that. So we've done that back work here at Beck. So we have a small panel of people that can do that more efficiently. Um, if you want to survey customers and consumers, that takes a while to recruit. Um, here at Beck, we would use a third party to recruit nationwide, but we have a good access to the Midwestern um, uh, demographic. Whoop, whoop. There was a time where we took some energy drinks to a local college and got the Missouri College kid feedback on certain flavors, and that was some really valuable information to our customer because that was the area that they serve. So, yeah. The demographic um, that they go after. That Those is, are right. the consumers that use energy drinks. That's if any right. of you have taken finals before, you know there's about <laughs> two energies before any final. That's right, yeah. Um, and then other times you just need numbers. You just need people. So it could be anybody here or there. So, for example, if you're trying to um, match a product and you want to know how different that they are, then you might do a triangle test, which is one question, very straightforward, very easy. You have three products in front of you, two are the same, one is different, they're blind samples. Can you tell the difference? Yeah. So there's some statistics involved in that, on depending on how many people get the question right. And um, if you hit a certain probability number, then you can statistically say that your products are um, the same or different. So Megan. Now that we got through all that stuff, what do, what do we got over here in these cups? So at Beck, we do a lot of product matching or close to matching by taste. So our R&D team is able to taste a reference product and then depict what are some of the ingredients that might be in the flavor and then either create a flavor or we have a flavor very similar and we will put together the entire demo the finished beverage if you will with our flavor in it that is as most similar to the reference as possible so a customer might ask us to do this if they're trying to make a private label version of something or they just really like a certain brand of fruit snacks but they're trying to make a beverage that tastes like the fruit snacks right i just want to end this up wrap this up thank you so much for coming along and being a part of our first episode thanks for having me it was so fun yeah no problem and then uh so how do people reach out to you megan if they want some sensory work yeah so the easiest way to reach out is sensory at beckflavors.com that'll go straight to my email as well as a couple other sales people so that we can help you with your needs yeah and then just you know at the end here i just want to thank everybody for watching uh behind the flavor where we got to unlock the sensory parts of flavor today uh and as always don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time